I've been volunteering with the Red Cross for a, a bit less than two years. Um, the reason I joined is that uh, I always had a lot of respect for the Red Cross as an organization. In fact, uh, I had heard of the Red Cross right from being very young. 70% of our workforce is volunteers and uh, 25,000 across Canada. The volunteers here are very important to us. Without the volunteers, we wouldn't be able to provide the service. We do supply equipment that can be taken out and set up. This would be larger types of equipment like beds and equipment that needs to be installed. We have technicians that do that, but we need volunteers who can go out with those technicians um, to help unload the trucks, to just support the whole system of getting that equipment out there. I would encourage people to volunteer for the Red Cross because it's a very open organization, uh, very also very international, that's one aspect that I liked about it. The vast part of the whole Red Cross organization is run by volunteers and without the volunteers we can't provide these services. Go interactive with Annette. The City of Nanaimo has released another Walking Heritage Tour brochure and Chris Schoberg is here to tell us all about this walk back through time. And we're starting off in front of a very, very iconic building in Nanaimo. Tell me a bit about this, this one building. Well, this is the old Nanaimo Hospital building built in 1925. Uh, basically, it replaced an older hospital building, a wood frame that was, was nearby at, uh, earlier in the late 1800s. Uh, it was only in operation until about 1962, and then that's when the Nanaimo Regional General Hospital was first constructed, and then all operations moved there. This new brochure, how many in the series you've got now? This would be seventh in a series. And how long is this walk? This walk's about 6.1 kilometers, so it's a bit, of a, a bit of a walk, a bit of a hoof through the old city neighborhood, but it meanders very nicely. And if you want to have a good perception of the history of the old city and its importance to the evolution of Nanaimo as a city, this is a great walk to take. So is this kind of like this hospital building here, is this like the starting point of it? This is about midpoint in the walk, so it starts more down towards the downtown core, but then it ends at the Nanaimo Cemetery. Now, what's the idea behind having these self-guided heritage tours? I mean, why is that so important for people? Well, we find uh, this is something that we've done for many years, back to the late 1990s, and we find it's a great way of promoting of heritage awareness in the city of Nanaimo, particularly of the Nanaimo's built heritage. And really, we, we feature buildings in this and tell the story of Nanaimo through the various buildings. In this case, because it's a neighborhood, it has been predominantly residential housing that you find here. So there's a lot of, uh, about over 30 properties that are featured in this brochure, talking about primarily the residential history of Nanaimo. Most of these homes, they range from the early 1900s all the way to the 1950s. That's the general period of time that's most represented here. So it's a good cross-section of how people lived in Nanaimo, what kind of housing styles were popular at various points between 19, the early 1900s and 1950s. So you sort of get a real snapshot of Nanaimo's history and particularly this neighborhood as a residential neighborhood just outside the downtown core. And what does the, the brochure itself tell us about? I mean, is, is there a little bit of history about each of the buildings in there? Or is it just pointing out that this home was built in, say, 1925 or something like that? Yeah, well, the information provided is generally gives you a construction date, as far as we know it, and then basically a little snapshot history of each of the properties, usually some connection with the people that live there, maybe a little bit of a story about those residents. Uh, so, um, and a, a little bit about the architecture that's featured in each building. And what you're looking at here is 1913 to 9 when these both these houses were constructed and then the one next door is the Woodman residence and the connection there was to a well-known uh, school teacher Mae Woodman who was a lived there for years and years. That's pretty neat. So there are seven of these and where can people get them from Chris? These can be found at uh, the Nanaimo Museum, Nanaimo Archives, all the uh, uh, city facilities such as the Aquatic Centre, Bevan Park. So basically public locations you can find these uh, racked up and available for, for, for selection. All right. Fantastic. Now you can take your own walk back in time through the city of Nanaimo. Seven different tours to take and get your brochure now and take a hike. It's just really exciting to take something that's just old and worn and maybe thrown away or not looking very interesting and change it into something entirely new. My name is Georgina. I'm the owner of Paint Chica. I have a small studio here in Cedar. 
where I paint and upcycle furniture, refinish furniture. I have vintage decor, I do upcycling. I've always really liked painted furniture. I used to paint furniture when I was even a teenager, but I've recently gotten into it. I started this business about three years ago, and I did a lot of custom refinishing for customers and also buying pieces at um, used furniture stores, estate sales, garage sales, thrift stores, anywhere that I could really get it. And um, putting an artistic flair and refinishing the furniture. You can add embellishments, you can change the hardware, uh, and you can basically get a brand new piece of furniture and that's just really fun. We have this Cedar Yellow Point Artisans Tour coming up. It is my first year on the tour. I'll be participating on the tour, so it's very exciting. It's a four-day event and all of the different artisans, galleries, farms in this area put on um, a, a, an event where people can come, uh, shop, try foods, view the premises, the farms, different things like that. So it's really fun and I can't wait to get everything decorated and have everybody show up. Ian Thorpe is a Nanaimo City Councillor today. We're here at Dallas Square on Front Street today planting bulbs. Why? Well, I'm glad you asked that, <laughs> Kate. It's actually a really heartwarming story, and it's a story of international friendship that dates back to the end of the Second World War. And it relates to the a little bit of history. Uh, Princess Juliana of the Netherlands, during World War II, sought refuge in Canada as the Nazis had overrun her home country. And it was Canadian soldiers who were very instrumental, as we know, in liberating the Netherlands in 1945. So as a gesture of thank you, uh, the Dutch people in 1945 presented Canada with 100,000 tulip bulbs. And every year since then, the Dutch people have made a present to Canada of tulip bulbs. And they have usually been planted at a garden in Ottawa. This year marks the 70th anniversary of that original gift. And to celebrate that, we had a little bit of a contest across Canada for communities to receive some tulip bulbs. There were 400 applications. Nanaimo was one of 140 communities that were chosen to receive these bulbs. And we got 700 tulip bulbs. What an honor! To create this friendship garden, a, a Dutch Canadian friendship garden. Wonderful. Now they're all red and white. They're all red and white. And everyone's uh, planted them who was here today and there were some students here. There were some students here representing Bayview Elementary. We were pleased to have them here. Also we had uh, representatives from the local legions involved and also from the RCMP and we appreciated their attendance as well. And we'll be able to celebrate this as the tulips bloom in the springtime but then we're also going to be welcoming visitors to the city as they follow a, a route, a garden tour route. It's an online route apparently and I'm going to have to check it out. It's called Canada Gardens Route, I believe, and it is online, and these gardens are going to be featured. So hopefully ours will be one of the biggest and best. Well, of course it will. Of <laughs> course it will. We're always like that, aren't we? Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Kate, very Thank much. You. We're going to throw things over now to Derek Johnstone. He's spending time with the Nanaimo Air Cadets as they fundraise and prepare for a trip to Vimy Ridge.